Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. Last time, we saw how route reflectors can simplify our iBGP configuration, but they also hide topology information. Specifically, R2 only learned one path to R6, even though two are available. One solution to this problem is to use a shadow session, which creates a second iBGP session from a route reflector client to the route reflector. For brevity, I've only built that shadow session from R3 to R7, since R3 is the core router that ultimately decides which egress router will be used. In real life, you'd want to configure this on all iBGP speakers where such a decision might exist. Let's broadly trace the routing flow in this design. R6 continues to advertise its loopback prefixes to R4 and R5 over eBGP, which hasn't changed. Both R4 and R5, the egress PEs, select this eBGP route as their best path and advertise it to R7, the route reflector. R7 then selects one of the routes as best and reflects it to the other iBGP routers. Specifically, the path via R4 is preferred and we'll focus on R3's reception of it. We saw previously that iBGP routers like R2 and R3 didn't know about the backup path via R5. With two iBGP sessions from R3 to R7, R3 can receive two different routes from R7. The shadow session is used to exchange the diverse path, which enables R7 to advertise a second best option to R3. R3 would then have both paths and therefore be able to make a local determination as to which one is best or possibly enable multipath. Note that creating the shadow session also requires a new set of loopback addresses advertised into IS to IS. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. We'll start on R3 by examining the new IP addresses. Under Loopback 1, I've created new IPv4 and IPv6 addresses which both end in 33. I've done the same thing on R7, except those addresses end in 77. Let's quickly check the IS to IS configuration to see what updates I made. You must advertise these new loopbacks into IGP so that the shadow session can form between peers. Loopback 1 is just another passive interface to be included, which isn't complicated. Next, let's check the BGP configuration on R3. This time, we have two separate session templates. The original template remains unchanged and uses loopback0 as the update source. The shadow template retains the remote AS since these sessions are still iBGP, but the update source is loopback1. R3 now has four total iBGP sessions, two for IPv4 and two for IPv6. This includes the original session and the new shadow session for each address family. Remember, the shadow session is sourced from loopback1 and targets the remote loopback1 on R7, which are the 10.0.0.77 and FC00 colon colon 77 addresses. Under each address family, both peers are activated and multipath is enabled for up to two IBGP paths. Before we check R2's BGP table, let's head to R7, the route reflector. Here's the BGP configuration, and just like R3, there's a second session template for the shadow session, which uses loopback1 as the update source. R7 identifies 10.0.0.33 and FC00 colon colon 33 as new IBGP peers, which are the shadow sessions to R3. This is a reciprocation of what we reviewed on R3 just moments ago. Under each address family, we first need to tell the route reflectors to select and install a backup path. We discussed this technique in a previous video covering primary and backup routing. Then, we explicitly instruct R7 to advertise the backup path over the shadow session using the diverse path feature. 
This is comparable to Advertise Best External seen previously, except this time both routes are IBGP learned. Let's quickly check R7's IPv6 BGP table to ensure the backup path was correctly identified. R4 is still the best path due to its lower router ID, and R5 is marked as a backup as expected. Next, let's ensure R7 is advertising the best path to R6's loopback prefix to R3 over the original IBGP session. We'll use the Advertised Routes option to reveal this. In addition to R1's IPv6 loopback, we see the R6 prefix with a next hop of R4. This is R7's best path as indicated by the greater than sign. Let's see what routes the other session is advertising by targeting the FC00 colon colon 33 neighbor. Over the shadow session, we don't want to send a copy of the same best path, but rather the diverse backup path. The A means additional path, the B means backup, and the next hop is R5, which is correct. Let's head back to R3 to confirm it's working correctly. I've displayed the IPv6 BGP entry for that prefix, and we can see that multipath is working correctly. Each route was learned from 10.0.0.7, which is R7, but from a different peering address. The path with a next hop of R4 was learned from the original session, while the path with a next hop of R5 was learned from the shadow session. As a final check, let's examine the fib entry for this prefix. We see both link local next hops using two separate interfaces, proving that multipath is possible in a single route reflector environment.